Hi everyone. Welcome to the ninth lesson of the Crow Panel ESP32 HMI Display Series Tutorials. In this lesson, I'll show you how to create an interface to control a servo motor using the slider widget in Squareline Studio. The lesson will be divided into three parts. First, designing the UI. Second, modifying the example code. And third, editing the UI code. Moving forward, let's demonstrate the first step. First, open Squareline Studio and design a UI interface to control the servo motor's rotation. To create a UI project, I won't go through the entire process in detail. However, if you're unclear about why you're creating it this way, please review the content in Lesson 6 first. Once created, we need to find the slider widget, add it to the interface, and adjust its size accordingly. Of course, apart from the slider, another commonly used widget for controlling the servo motor is the arc widget which should also be added to the interface. Since there are only two widgets, I've made them as large as possible. Additionally, I need two labels to display the current values of the widgets. One goes in the middle of the arc widget, with its content modified, and the other goes below the slider with the same settings and adjusted font size. Once the interface design is finalized and all the widgets are in place, if you wish to achieve the rotation of the servo motor in accordance with the changes in the widget values, you will need to add events for these two primary widgets. First, select the slider widget and add an event in the inspector panel. Set the trigger to occur when the variable changes. Then select the action to be triggered, which is call function. You can customize the function name, and we will add the function content later when modifying the UI file. Similarly, add the same event to the circular arc component with the same trigger and action. After the settings are complete, you can simulate the effect. Note that the radius of this circular arc component is too large. Since I'm using an SG90 servo motor, which only rotates 180, I've modified the value of this circular arc component and the background arc in the inspector panel on the right to range from 0 to 180. At this point, you may find the circular widget's usage feels a bit unnatural. Don't worry, just find the rotation section where you can adjust the direction of the circular widget. Rotate it 180, and that's it. Then you can adjust its size accordingly. Next. Let's set a range for the value of the slider widget to match the rotation angle of the servo. Finally, conduct another simulation, and if there are no issues, you can export the UI file. Click on File and open Project Settings to set the save path for your project, the export path for UI files, and the export rules for UI files. These steps were covered in Lesson 6, so I won't explain the reasons behind each action here. After you've made your settings, click Apply Changes, then click Export and select Export UI File. After exporting the UI, first locate the example code for this lesson from the course files. If you're unsure where to download the course files, you can find the download link in the video's description. Once you've found the appropriate example code based on your board's dimensions, Copy the recently exported UI file into the same folder as the example code. This way, when you open the example code, the UI file will also be opened simultaneously. Now, moving on to the second step, modifying the example code. This step is quite simple, as the example code has been used numerous times. Therefore, you just need to confirm if the necessary changes have been made in the specific places. First, check if the header file Y is included and if the two headers related to demos are commented out. As they have already been modified, there are no issues there. Moving on to the GEFX SOCON. Header file. It contains all the information about the display and touch driver interfaces, so you need to select the appropriate driver interface based on the board you're using. For this lesson, I'm using a 5-inch board 
so I'll change it to the 5 inch macro here. If you're using a 2.4 inch, 2.8 inch, or 3.5 inch board, you need to refer to episode 5 and replace the corresponding display driver configuration files or setup. Finally, make sure that the UI interface loading function has been added to the setup function. All right, modifying the example code is complete for this step. Next, for the final step, we'll modify the UI file and switch to the UI event LC file. This is where the functions I created in Squareline Studio reside. You can find the trigger conditions for these two functions in the OI. C file. In the sliders event, you'll notice that the slider change function is triggered when the slider's value is changed. This aligns with the settings I just configured in Squareline Studio. Similarly, the arc widgets events follow the same principle, with only a difference in the function being called. All right. Let's take a look at what these two functions are supposed to do after sliding these two widgets. My idea is that when the slider is moved, we first need to read the current value of the slider. And then the servo motor rotates to a specific angle based on that value. So, I'll need to declare a variable to store the current value of the slider. But which function should I use to get the current value of the slider? You can search for LVGL doc, open the official LVGL documentation, find the slider widget in the widget section, click on the API, then click on the LV slider page, and you'll see all the functions related to the slider. The one I'll be using is get value. I'll copy that into the slider changed function. The first parameter is the object being operated on. You can refer to the function that determines the event trigger condition and use that function to retrieve the slider object based on the past in parameters. Alternatively, you can directly find the pointer to the slider in the UIC file and use that pointer to specify the slider clearly. Using the pointer approach is more convenient, so I've chosen to use the pointer as the first parameter. However, when I slide the slider, the arc widget should also change, and both widgets should be synchronized to make it logical. Therefore, I also need to add the operation to set the arc widget's value within this function. Open the LVGL documentation, navigate to the arcs API page, find the set value function, copy it into the slider change function, and fill in the required parameters, the value to set, and the target object. Similarly, Following this logic, I would add a similar function in the arc changed event handler to synchronize the value of the slider widget when the arc widget's value changes. It's worth noting that when setting the value of the slider widget, we also need to determine the third parameter. To improve efficiency, I will choose to disable the animation. In order to let the function controlling the servo know when it needs to rotate, I added a variable to both functions as an indicator of whether the servo requires rotation. Since it needs to be called from other files, it must be a global variable. Therefore, it also needs to be declared as an external variable in the UI file. Next, switching to the Dino file, I plan to add code to control the servo movement in the loop function. First, I'll use a flag variable to determine if the servo needs to rotate and then add the necessary code to control the servo's movement accordingly. To control the servo, I'll utilize the ESP32 servo library. Click on Sketch, Locate Include Library, and open the Library Manager. Search for ESP32 servo, select the latest version, and install it. If you're unsure about how to use it, you can click More Info to view the documentation provided by the author. Once you click on Servo, you'll see that the header file you need to include is this one. Therefore, I'll add it to my example code, then create a servo object underneath it, name it Maservo, and within the setup function, use the attach function to attach pin 38 to the object. This pin 38 corresponds to the GPIOD port on the board. Since I'm using a five inch board, the GPIOD port pin numbers may vary for different board sizes, 
Therefore, when performing this step, you need to refer to the silk screen on your board's GPIOD port to fill in the appropriate pin number. Lastly, I just need to finalize the code for servo rotation. Using the right function, I'll specify the rotation angle as a parameter. This angle can be obtained from the value of the slider widget using the getValue function. Once the rotation is complete, remember to reset the flag. That's it. Oh, and we need to remove the int from the conditional check. Furthermore, I remembered that I had added two labels in Squareline Studio, but haven't utilized them yet. As I opened the LVGL documentation, I found an interesting function in the demo code for the slider page called ELVSNARF, which is similar to the sprintf I used in the previous lesson. I copied it into the loop function, declared the necessary parameters, modified the content displayed by the labels, and specified the objects for manipulation. After concatenating the text, I used the setText function to update the content of the labels. Since I needed to use two labels, I copied and pasted the code segment below, made the same modifications, and double-checked the labels corresponding to these two widgets. The arc widget should be using lab alone. All right. All the modifications to the UI files have been completed. Before uploading, I'd like to remind you again to make sure you enable the font size you've used in Squareline Studio in the LVCom H file. It's easy to forget, and it can be time-consuming if you encounter errors during compilation. If you're not sure how to do it, you can refer to the content of the previous lesson. Next, Use a USB-C cable to connect the board to your computer and configure the compilation settings. Once done, you can upload the code. I won't go through the process of configuring the compilation settings in detail. If you're still unclear about how to do it, please refer to the content of the first lesson. After configuration, click Upload to upload the code. The upload process can be quite slow, so I'll speed up this part of the video. Once the code is uploaded, you'll see the screen displaying the UI design you just created. And you can control the servo motor's movement using the slider widget and arc widget on the UI. That's all for this lesson. If you find my course helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.